If, moreover, naturalism is correct, however implausible that is, and if consciousness is then an essentially material phenomenon, then there is no reason to believe that our minds, having evolved purely through natural selection, could possibly be capable of knowing what is or is not true about reality as a whole. Our brains may necessarily have equipped us to recognize certain sorts of physical objects around us and enabled us to react to them. But beyond that, we can assume only that nature will have selected just those behaviors in us most conducive to our survival, along with whatever structures of thought and belief might be essentially or accidentally associated with them. And there is no reason to suppose that such structures, even those that provide us with our notions of what constitutes a sound, rational argument, have access to any abstract truth about the totality of things. This yields the delightful paradox that, if naturalism is true as a picture of reality, it is necessarily false as a philosophical precept, for no one's belief in the truth of naturalism could correspond to reality except through a shocking coincidence, or better, a miracle. A still more important consideration, however, is that naturalism, alone among all considered philosophical attempts to describe the shape of reality, is radically insufficient in its explanatory range. The one thing of which it can give no account, and which its most fundamental principles make it entirely impossible to explain at all, is nature's very existence. For existence is most definitely not a natural phenomenon. It is logically prior to any physical cause whatsoever, and anyone who imagines that it is susceptible of a natural explanation simply has no grasp of what the question of existence really is. In fact, it is impossible to say how, in the terms naturalism allows, nature could exist at all. These are all matters for later, however. All I want to say here is that none of this makes atheism untenable in any final sense. It may be perfectly rational to embrace absurdity, for if the universe does not depend upon any transcendent source, then there is no reason to accord the deliverances of reason any particular authority in the first place, because what we think of as rationality is just the accidental residue of physical processes good for helping us acquire food, power, or sex, but probably not very reliable in the realm of ideas. In a sense, then, I am assuming the truth of a perfectly circular argument. It makes sense to believe in God if one believes in the real power of reason, because one is justified in believing in reason if one believes in God. Or to phrase the matter in a less recursive form, it makes sense to believe in both reason and God, and it may make a kind of nonsensical sense to believe in neither, but it is ultimately contradictory to believe in one but not the other. An honest and self-aware atheism, therefore, should proudly recognize itself as the quintessential expression of heroic irrationalism, a purely and ecstatically absurd venture of faith a triumphant trust in the absurdity of all things. But most of us already know this anyway. If there is no God, then of course the universe is ultimately absurd, in the very precise sense that it is irreducible to any more comprehensive equation. It is glorious, terrible, beautiful, horrifying, all of that. But in the end, it is also quite, quite meaningless.